Captain. Keep him pinned down, gentlemen. I'll go around and finish him off. Where's the nearest town? Border town. It's about six miles southeast, sir. That's why she's headed with Driscoll. We'll kill him now. Sergeant James Driscoll. He was in charge of recruit training when I went through Fort Walsh in 78. I had respected by everyone. He should have been promoted right to the top. Except that some thought he had a slight flaw. He was considered overly sympathetic towards the Indians. Is that what that squad's doing out front? Is she one of his flaws? Any idea who did this to your hero? He's choking. Move the table against the wall, quickly! It's all right. You're in border town, and I'm trying to clean that wound. Don't waste your time, man. Sergeant Driscoll. Uh -uh. What you got such a sour look on your face for, man? You seen men die before? Ah, uh, so I see you're a corporal now, Clive. <laughs> now, honey, where's the honey? She's right outside, sir. Jake, will you ask her to come in, please? <coughs> Who shot you, Sergeant? Who are you? Craddock, U.S. Marshal. <laughs> Five U.S. Cavalry officers dressed as cowhands kidnapped Sitting Bull from one of our Canadian reservations. Now, honey and I tracked him. <coughs> there was a small battle. When it was over, two of them were dead, and the other three retreated. 
Sitting Bull returned to the reservation. Nahani and I headed for the mountains. I thought we were going to be safe there. Three cavalry boys found us a couple of days ago. I had this hole in my chest and... <coughs> Enough talking. You two out of here. You must save your strength. And drink this. Ammunition. Find out where they got Driscoll. Yes, sir, Captain. See what the setup is with the marshal and the mounting. I'll be in a hotel. Yeah. Yes, sir. We gave Sitting Bull and his people sanctuary in Canada. Do you understand sanctuary? Oh, yeah, I understand it. That means Sitting Bull's hiding out there in Canada, all legal like. The point is, nothing or nobody is going to stop the government of the U.S. of A. from getting Chief Sitting Bull. And your Sergeant Driscoll there, he interfered with their plans? Well, you can forget about him. If you think you're going to stop them cavalry boys from killing Driscoll, you're in for a rude awakening, Corporal, believe me. It's funny, Jack. Sad, but funny. You and Driscoll, you're both the same. Bullheaded mavericks. Oh, really? And he deserves your help, Jack. I know she's in pain. But she won't let me touch her. And she hasn't said a word. It's strange seeing him here, dying. I still don't understand why they came here. He killed two U.S. cavalry officers. But they were trying to kidnap the Indian chief. Canada's sensitive to what the U.S. wants. The U.S. wants sitting bull, no matter what. The other reason Driscoll came here is Nahani. He'd have to give her up if he wanted to stay in the force. There's a rule against that? I'd have to get permission to get married. If my commanding officer said no, I'd have to give up the lady if I wanted to stay in the force. Now, honey, you should be resting. Get her upstairs, Clive. She's about to give birth. Evening, boys. <laughs> My compadre over at the stable there says a couple of you boys are riding horses that look a lot like U.S. cavalry mounts. You know anything about that? What's the problem, Marshal? The problem is the man you're gunning for is on the Canadian side. And I know you boys don't have much respect for borders, but in this town, you will abide by the law. So none of your business, Marshal. The U.S. Cavalry has the same authority as the law in this territory, and you know that, sir. Too bad you ain't wearing uniforms, because to me, you look a lot like drovers. You'll oblige me if you'll hand over them guns. Slowly. All right, Marshal, whatever you say. Like I said, hand over them guns. Slowly. U.S. military issue, just like I figured. Step back. Joe, Cody, take this fella over to the jail. You can pick up your sidearms tomorrow morning. 
before you leave town. Tonight, you break into the general store and get his guns and ammunition. Tomorrow, we kill whoever gets in our way. Oh, but, Captain. We failed to bring in Sid and Ball because of Tresco. As long as I can at least report he's dead, I can justify anything we do. I'm killing a U.S. Marshal. Anything! You're doing just fine. Just fine now, honey. Now! Push down! Now! Push! Push! Yeah, good! You've got it! That's it! You've done it! <laughs> it's a boy! It's a beautiful boy now, honey. You've got it! I think you'll want to know. Sergeant Driscoll? <laughs> so, still alive. Your child is born. Congratulations. I only gave birth. <laughs> we have a child? Yes, just moments ago. <laughs> is it all right? From the noise it made, it sounds very healthy to me. Is it a boy or a girl? Uh, well, uh... A boy! A boy! <laughs> we have a son. <laughs> How glorious. Is the honey all right? Well, Nanny is fine. <laughs> now, honey, you shouldn't be out of bed. You got my horses ready? Sure, just take me a minute. Marie? Yes? Is it bad for my son to be born under a roof and not under the sky? No, I don't believe so. Tell me, please, what Sergeant Driscoll says when he sees his son. But, Nanny, I've already told you ten times what he said. Please, tell me again. I must remember his words. I will hear his words no more. At first he said, we have a son. How glorious. Come to bail out your man, have you? How much is the fine? Well, attacking a peace officer comes cheap. That'll be two dollars. Getting the horses. I get your guns. Don't forget the guns you uh, snuck off our horses back at the stable.
You, sir, are an obstacle to the completion of our military mission. You, sir, must be obliterated. Takes care of that moth-eaten marshal. Jake, go see what's going on. I'll have to go back to the reservation. That's the law. Now, honey's Driscoll's wife. That makes her a Canadian citizen. You looked everywhere. You didn't find that piece of paper that says they was all married, all legal-like, did you? No. But Driscoll wouldn't have lied about that. He wanted her to live here, not on some reservation. Yeah. Hey, Jake, where are you going? How are you called? Jake. Jake who brings me water? That was me. Now, honey, for a long time, I've taken. I've taken the food and the water, the gold and the silver, from this ground, this land. Your people and your people's land have been good to me. Many people died. I survived. There is plenty for all. I know. But always I've wanted to give something back. And I never knew how until now. But now I can give something to your land and your people and to you. Nahani, we must become married. I am Mrs. Sergeant Driscoll. God love you. I know. But without a piece of paper saying that you're married, Nahani, they'll take you back to the reservation. Jake already gave up his place for her and her kid. Some place. It's nothing more than a shack. It's warm and dry, woman. I nearly fell off my horse when I heard Jake was getting hitched. Oh, no, it's not like that at all. He's living in the barn now. Come on. I now pronounce you man and wife. You'll keep this safe for Nahani? Please and thank you. Of course. Thanks. 
Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You know, he always was like that. He saw something that needn't do, and he up and did it without telling nobody. Well, he doesn't earn enough money to feed Nahani and the baby. So a few of us are getting together to take care of them. Well, you can count me in. I already did. Nice shave, Jack. Thank you.